Welcome to today's little chat with uh, Yoga with TG. I'm happy you're here and listening. And if you're listening live, drop me a little note or let me know that you've popped on. Always exciting to see people commenting or at least watching. <laughs> um, so today I wanted to talk about one of the, it's almost an oxymoron related to yoga, but it's also one of the most important elements to why yoga is so powerful. And it's finding this balance of being engaged and active, but yet also simultaneously soft. So that's why it sounds like an oxymoron, right? How can I be engaged and active and striving, but yet also be soft? So the pose that I feel like you can really see this most clearly is, and one of my favorites to talk about this in, is Warrior Two. So oftentimes, we get into warrior two, right? The arms come out to that T. And I oftentimes will cue that the shoulders should stay soft. So see, stop. So stay soft in the shoulders. Well, a lot of times when we don't know what that really means, you'll see people react in one of two ways. So I'm going to adjust here a little bit. So oftentimes when I cue, stay soft in the shoulders, it's because they're coming into their warrior two <laughs> and they have their arms up and their shoulders up by their ears. They're kind of like this, right? And so I say, well, stay soft or relax the shoulders. But then we end up with this, right? Well, now we're not really engaged, we're not active. So there's an in-between. You don't want to be here and like limped arms, but you also don't want to be way up here, right? So instead, those arms are engaged. They're active. They're reaching and striving, but our shoulders are soft, right? So my arms are as active and working in the same amount, but my shoulders can be relaxed. And so it takes that pressure off of my shoulders, but yet I still get that full extension in the arms, all that work happening in the arms. And so that's what we're talking about in this engaged, but yet soft. Like where are we active? Where are we working? Where are we striving? And yet what elements are not? What parts of the body are soft. And in vinyasa yoga, we're pairing movement with breath. And so the body is often engaged, right? But yet we want that breath to stay soft. And so we want that breath to stay deep and slow. And if we lose that breath, that's our body's signal that we need to find a rest pose, take a few beats, Slow that breath back down so we can come back to practice and really feel that flow of moving the body from one movement to another and enjoying that balance, right? That duality of engaged and working, but yet soft and flowy. And I was thinking about this today. Um, it's the beginning of my fall semester. I'm an English professor um, for a community college. And so today was our first day. And those days always feel a little bit, right? You're trying to figure out your new schedule. But fall of 2020, we are all online and virtual uh, because of the pandemic. And so I was on my computer, <laughs> looking at my camera on my computer all day. I was on Zoom and teaching yoga um, from about noon to not too long ago. So I was on Zoom and a device 
for a lot of hours, which is different than I'm used to. And so it's something new. And so just like if you're starting yoga, this idea of engaged but soft takes a little bit to get to, right? It takes some practice. At first, we're trying to figure out alignment. We're trying to figure out the poses. We're listening to the cues and we're working, right, mentally and physically. And then as you continue your practice and you get more comfortable with your flows and your routine and knowing what it should feel like in the body, you can feel and really experience that soft element. And you're like, oh, this is, this is it, right? Like I'm engaged, but yet I feel soft in the mind or I feel soft in my breath, even though my body is just as engaged as it always was. And I feel like every kind of new thing that we delve into, we're working to find that balance of engaged, but soft. And so I was thinking about that today with, this is a lot of Zoom instruction. I'm gonna be in front of this computer little square <laughs> instead of in front of a classroom all semester. And so today it felt like I was engaged and I was active, but I wasn't soft yet, if that makes sense, right? I'm not comfortable yet. I haven't found the place to soften, to find that flow. It's not a routine yet. I haven't figured out all the elements and the logistics. I haven't done it enough times to find that softness. I'm still, my arms are engaged, but my shoulders are up, right? I'm walking around like this. And so it's much more taxing. And so that's what I'm kind of looking for in this new arena that I'm in of teaching via Zoom all semester. So I can find a comfort in being active and engaged and delivering content and being there for students, but at the same time, also it being a softer, less taxing experience on me and my mental state and how I feel after, you know, not as exhausted as I get into kind of that rhythm and that I'm able to deliver in the same way, but to stay softer in my body and mind. So yoga is a great practice of that. And if you have started yoga and you haven't found that softness yet, it comes. Keep practicing. And when it comes, it's really cool. And it may come and go too. There may be areas where you feel it and you find it and you're like, oh, in that moment when we were doing that, I felt like that ease of the breath and the flow. And I felt that engaged, but yet soft element. And then other parts of the practice you may not. There are always going to be parts that are harder and parts where it's maybe more, where it's easier to maybe find that balance. And so life is the same way, right? That there will be days where like, oh, I think, I think I found kind of that rhythm. It felt good. And then other days were like, that just, I was fighting life the whole day through, right? And so that's kind of all part of it. And I think it's another great way that yoga and life really collide and represent kind of one another. And that is another reason we meet ourselves on our mats on a regular basis. And so if you're just starting out and this kind of discussion is really interesting for you, I do have an online beginners course that walks you through what that alignment is, right? We want to stay soft here, but engaged here. So that you can kind of get a sense of what you should feel like in your body in these poses, because that's part of getting toward the softness, right? It's understanding, okay, here's where I need to be. And then repeating and trying again and again. So if that's something that you're interested in, I'm putting it up on the screen in case you want to check out that course, or if you have 
teens who are home or preteens doing some virtual school and you're thinking like mindfulness, some yoga would be a great way um, for them to manage kind of the stress of this new situation um, or something to do together. Uh, bit.ly slash beginning yoga will take you to the page and you can learn more. Also, let me know if there's anything that I can answer or help you um, learn about. I'm always excited to talk yoga. So let me know if I can help you in any way. And I wish you a day tomorrow of being active and being engaged and present, but also nice and soft.